talking about how to use a stethoscope. Um, I've seen lots of other nursing YouTubers do this. I've watched, whew, I guess I'll step back. I've watched a few of these videos myself before I got into the program. Um, and uh, yeah, so I thought it would be beneficial to do it for my viewers. So I was fortunate enough to get the Lipman Cardiology stethoscope. It was a birthday present. This is the box that it came in. The inside looks like this. It has a little pamphlet that just like tells you how to use the stethoscope, how to clean the stethoscope, stuff like that. Okay, and then you also have extra parts, different ear piece sizes and stuff like that. I don't know if all stethoscopes come with this, but I know mine did. So anyway, so let's just jump right into what are the parts of the stethoscope. Okay, so here's the stethoscope right and you have obviously the ear pieces and then you have the tubing which the sound goes through <clears throat> and then you have your diaphragm and your bell okay the diaphragm is the bigger part and then the bell is the smaller part this one is actually an adult and pediatric one so there's a little you probably cannot see it but there's like a little notch so you can just turn it and then you would be able to listen to the different sides okay so this is the stethoscope Again, you got the bell, the diaphragm, the tubing, and then the ear pieces. Um, whenever you use your stethoscope, you want to make sure that this is facing frontwards. Like you want it to be a pointing away from your body or else you're not going to hear anything and it's going to be quite uncomfortable. So you have to make sure that it's pointing away, kind of like a little V pointing away from you. And you're going to go ahead and put them in your ears and let them get snug. Okay. And then my professor taught us to hold the stethoscope like this. Um, I sometimes just hold it like this, depending on, you know, what I'm doing. You don't ever really want to touch your thumb to what you're listening to, because sometimes you can hear your own heartbeat with um, touching your thumb. And same with taking a pulse. Be careful of your own thumb so you don't feel your own pulse. But anyway, so you can take the stethoscope at that point gently, because it's loud. And obviously it's on the right side. And then you can begin to auscultate lung, um, heart, bowel sounds, anything of that nature. So that is the rundown of the stethoscope and I thought it would be a little bit more beneficial to go more in depth of what exactly you're listening to with the stethoscope. So I have these um, from my fundamentals textbook. They're awesome, awesome diagrams. Let's see if you can see, it kind of shows you like where everything is. Um, so you got your lungs and then your heart obviously sits right there, but it tells you like the axillary line, the midclavicular line, all of that. So it's just kind of showing you like, like your landmarks for, you know, what you're looking for, where you're going to be listening, things like that. So I really, really like that. I thought it was a good diagram. If you like it, pause the video, screenshot it. I studied that diagram constantly. And then I also have this one which is really good for assessing lung sounds so whenever you listen to lung sounds i'm sure that you've heard in your classes that you're going to listen go over go down go over go down go over go down so that way you're not missing any part of the lungs and then you're going to do the same thing also down the back you're going to go you know listen over down listen over down and you're just going to keep doing that over and over but this diagram is really good it gives you the numbers and shows you exactly where you should be listening so again if you like this diagram pause the video screenshot it hopefully it helps you okay and then let's see here if we can find the one for the heart because that was for the lungs okay perfect right here all right, and then we have this diagram to show the different parts of the heart that you're going to listen to. So you have different points of the <clears throat> cardiovascular system that you're going to listen to to assess the heart. So you're going to start with the aortic, and then you're going to go over to the pulmonic, and then you're going to come over to, I guess they call it the second pulmonic area, but I think some people call it herbs point. And then you also have the tricuspid, which is a little bit closer to the bottom of the breast. And then you have the mitral, which is like 
more towards mid sternum, you know, I mean, what is it? Sternum, more towards your sternum, but mid clavicular line, more towards your sternum is where you're gonna listen to the mitral valve or point PMI, point of maximal impulse. That's also where you can listen to that also. And then this is a little diagram. Focus, focus, focus. There we go. If you like the diagram, you can go ahead and screenshot that also. But those are just a few tips on um, using your stethoscope and the points that you should listen for. Um, like I said, if you like the diagrams, pause them. I mean, pause the video, screenshot them. You know, go be with your family. You know, listen to a few lung sounds, listen to a few heart sounds. If you know anybody in your family who has a murmur, things like that. Um, just try to familiarize yourself with the way that things should be sounding. Um, the correct placement of your stethoscope, um, getting comfortable with touching people because that's, you know, uh, it's, that's something you have to get used to is, you know, touching people and moving breasts and things of that nature. Um, so that way you can assess the heart and lung sounds properly. Um, I remember the first time I heard a murmur, I was in clinical and it was like just so amazing because, you know, you always just hear the love dub, love dub, you never hear, um, the other things because usually you're listening to a clinical instructor or you're listening to um you know a classmate somebody in your cohort something like that so usually everybody is relatively healthy and you're not hearing any abnormalities so it's really exciting when you meet somebody in clinical or your family or somebody who has you know a murmur or maybe they're sick or have upper respiratory infection something like that to just kind of hear the different sounds of the lungs like the wheezing and the crackles and you know to hear the different you know the murmurs and you know just the s1 and the s2 sound just all these different sounds that you're hearing um it's, it's really exciting. Uh, I still have a lot to learn. I've only taken fundamentals, so forgive me if anything's slightly off. Um, but yeah, I think that this video could help anybody who is a beginner, and I will for sure be doing another video like this as I progress on in my program and become more confident with my skills. Um, but yeah, I can't wait for this semester to start and share it with everybody. I will be documenting what I'm learning, the new skills that I'm learning, and all that kind of stuff, how the class is going, and all of that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you are not subscribed already. And um, keep an eye open for some new videos. Turn the little bell on so you get a notification when I do post. And I will see everybody in the next video. I hope you have a wonderful summer. And... Let's get ready to get back to this grind of nursing school. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!